Guys, getting on to Caden Proctor first, kicking us off with the very talented offensive tackle, number two player per 247 sports at the tackle position from Southeast Polk High School in Des Moines, Iowa. Six foot seven, 330 pounds, currently committed to Iowa, coming from Iowa. And guys, this dude, and we were saying this before we started taping, simply enough to describe him put together like he's already a college senior. This guy has the build, probably the best build about of, out of any of the recruits that we're talking about today, completely filled out, and he plays like a grown man amongst boys in these games, the way that he is putting guys into the dirt. Matt, going on over to you first, it's pretty crazy watching this guy play the way that he's put together as an 18-year-old. Yeah, even you said it too. Like just the the way that we're watching this film and what we see, it's kind of hard to evaluate him because he is just like that grown a man out there playing against uh, young high school boys that are just not on the same level as him. But I mean, you know, six seven three thirty, every bit of it. And you know, I think really what I was like really excited to see too is you know he's got like the really strong lower foundation that you want to see like every great offensive lineman have like he's super developed right he's got like the strong legs he's got the strong base and foundation that you need and and then like on top of that was just like the mean streak you know you could just see that he really enjoys just punishing every person that he goes against and really i want to say i'll just finish up with this before we kick it to ryan but just like the hand strength is legit like the hand strength is is something else like there were so many times where he got his hands on multiple defenders and it was like that quick rip down in one sudden move and it was unbelievable just how quickly he could get people to the ground with that move so you know super impressive though i was i couldn't believe how talented this kid is yeah i mean he's ready to play right now matt right it's it's like it's so crazy man seeing the snatch trap and just the physicality he plays with and the strength in his hands man like this it is, it's a little bit of a cliche, right? But he is a farm boy, right? Like he's from the state of <laughs> Iowa. He's a farm boy. He's staying in the state of Iowa. He's going to be coached by some of the best offensive line developers at the next level. I know we're not talking about the University, University of Iowa yet, Joe, but it is just, he fits, man. He fits. And he's 6'7", 330 pounds. Like Matt said, he is every bit of that 330 pounds. He reminds me a little bit of you guys remember when Trey Smith came out of high school and he went. Look to at you with the comp this uh, early I'm though. Saying, We're not even I'm five saying. minutes in and you got a comp in. That's unbelievable, Ryan. I'm sorry, we were obviously just wearing on you a little bit. Now you're comping way too early. It's unbelievable, man. Um, I had it popped in so early, Matt. I'm watching yeah, this kid. It was like, natural, and I agree really with you. Was. Yeah, it really was, man. Because <laughs> if you follow Trey Smith at Tennessee, started out inside early out in his career then they moved the left tackle as a sophomore eventually goes back to inside at um during his junior and senior years while he was working working against obviously some issues with blood clots in his lungs but trey smith was that guy man where early on in his career he might just be too good to keep off the field so you find a spot for him right that's how i feel about caden proctor might be a guard early on might be a tackle either way he's a dominant dominant run blocker and he's a massive human being so he's just got those strength profiles that you look for early on in your career and i think you're making a great point too where you know i think going forward he might honestly be better off as a guard as being just one of those guys that is just that big and that powerful and that interior part of the offensive line with that hand strength and i i want to see just what you guys thought too but i thought his vision as a blocker was extremely impressive too. There was multiple times where you see him doubling or even pulling around and he passes something off that he knows is being blocked or protected and then he moves on to that next level. And I think that's something that just, you know, it, listen, you could coach it all the time you want in drills and all that kind of stuff, but like he definitely has that just the natural field vision and awareness that you want to see from a football player. So I would totally see him being a guard and just being part of that like huge offensive line for Iowa going forward. And I think you're right too. It's a great fit for him and for his style of play and what they do. I think that's going to be uh, very conducive to his, his success. Heck, I'd even argue that maybe he's one of those guys where as a true freshman, He's like a sub package guy when you're in goal line and you just bring in an extra offensive line. Dude, no doubt. Out of tight. Like, like he fits that perfectly because like it's so rare. I think out of any of the guys that we're talking about today is the most physically put together and brought along that he's able to to step in right away. He's probably yeah. not going to crack the lineup because that they've had so many talented guys come through that program. They're all well coached. They're probably going to be sticklers for who they put into that starting lineup. But heck, I, again, I think that you get him 
dipped into the lineup early in terms of just getting him some snaps. I think he fits that description perfectly of a, a fully developed kid. You put him as your, your tackle over or as an extra tight end, however you want to call it. And he's just paving lanes for guys uh, in those goal line situations, in those short yardage situations. Well, Joe, what's really cool about Caden Proctor is, and Matt said it before we started, right? He is a very nuanced player for his age, right? Like he's got a pretty smooth pass. At least he understands the depth that you need to get to and the foot and the foot processing that you need to get to the top of the track, which is great. And he's been, seems like he's been well coached, but now he's going to go into a system in Iowa where, I mean, again, Kirk Ferentz and they have, they had their struggles in offense this year, but offensive line wise, I mean, when you're going back to the Robert galleries of the world, the Tristan Wirfs, the, the Brandon Scherfs, like they have developed Lyman as well as any team in the country, maybe outside of Notre Dame. There's a quick Notre Dame plug. Uh, I know, right? You couldn't help it. Tremendous. It's unbelievable. Tremendous. But, you're, but you're right, though. They clearly know what they're looking for. They know what it yeah. takes, obviously, to have a big, strong physical O-line in that Big Ten conference. And he is going to fit perfectly in that. And you make a great point, too. I mean, that was something we said, you know, before we even started the show. Just his pass set is legit. Like, it looks like a mini NFL football player. I shouldn't even say mini because we know that's not to be true. If you see his highlight film and you'll see those highlights here, I'm sure. But uh, just the pass that is legit. The awareness is legit. The ability to redirect with his eyes and his body moving at his size is super impressive. And, uh, you know, it's it's going to be pretty, pretty cool to see kind of how it pans out for him at the next level. I think uh, – I think I was getting a really solid football player, and it's cool too. That what did you say, Ryan? He's the first five star in the in the state of Iowa. I believe no, no, he's not the first five star in the state of yeah. Iowa, but I believe he is the highest rated player, at least by two four seven, that has okay. ever gone to Iowa, which is pretty bizarre. I mean, usually they're That's working. Crazy. I mean, let's think about it, man. Usually they're working with three star recruits, a little bit under rate recruited guys. Yeah, that developmental maybe guys. Developmental yeah. need to fill out their frame, need to get right. the technique stuff down. This is a player that is ready made to come in tomorrow, and he's also going to become a part of that pipeline where they usually take guys that are here and bring them up to there. He's starting out kind of in the middle already and going to yeah. potentially bring him up. So I think that the, the ceiling is pretty high on a player like this because Iowa doesn't usually get this type of talent on the offensive line early on in their careers. Yeah, so, which is big for them to keep him too in state, exactly. which is always great for those those schools. No, that's a that's a great point, Matt. And I, I think it also opens a really good conversation that I want to wrap up his conversation uh, here with is that like, why do we think that it's hard for a program like Iowa to go and recruit these top talented players? Because very rarely and it's kind of shocking to see when you're looking through the list of top offensive tackle recruits and to see a guy committed to an Iowa. So like, what do you guys think here? Why do you think maybe Iowa doesn't have a, a success rate with with getting even top offensive linemen. Let's just take a look at that perspective. Well, maybe going forward, it's going to be the NIL thing, you know, of just the amount of money that teams are going to be willing to push out. And can Iowa compete with a lot of these other schools across the country that can attract big name players with just, you know, more dollars and cents? Um, you know, but I, I do, I would say this is just that like every teammate that I've ever had, right, that went to Iowa, they love the school, they're diehard Hawkeyes. You know, there, there's never been a bad report ever about their time at Iowa. It's a special place, you know, and it's even one of those things, too, where, like, you you have to enjoy it even as a fan when you're sitting at home. You're like, man, Iowa is pretty cool. And everyone that plays there, too, just knows how how intense it is playing at that stadium. So, uh, you know, it's it's important for them to keep guys at home. And I'm excited for Caden Proctor and seeing what he can do there. I, I would say this, too, Joe. I mean, I think there's something to the fact that Iowa – has identified and developed talent as well as anyone. So they might not even be in the business of like, hey, man, we don't have to get that five-star kid. It'd be nice yeah. if we can get him. And this kid made sense because he's right in the backyard, right? He's right in the right. home state. But the Robert Galleries of the world are going to be out there. The Tristan Wirfs are going to be out there that are three-star, maybe borderline four-star players that may need a longer road. But, I mean, the other thing is, though, that on the college level – Offensive linemen usually kind of bring along a little slowly, right? Like there's usually a lot of redshirt freshmen that hop in there, sophomores that start for the first time. Like it's not usually a true freshman comes yeah, in. Natural growing pains, you know, just of competing exactly. against guys that are that are grown men in the trenches, you know. And yes. when we get to some of these other guys too, like that's why we mentioned them maybe being two-way players going forward. But, you know, it's just 
defensive line is so athletic, you know, at, at the next level and even more athletic in the NFL. You see all these guys, right? Just like with the Denver Broncos the other day and Matt Ryan and how, how much he was abused in the pocket by those great pass rushers. Right. So it's just like, there's so many good athletes on the defensive line. And that's why guys like Caden Proctor are difference makers, you know, for your program, if you can get them. And that's, what's going to be, you know, exciting to see him match up with some of those other guys that have speed and power. Yeah, and Proctor, big, big win for Iowa that they're able to keep a guy like that at home, that they don't have to watch him go on to play at like a Michigan or an Ohio State. They get yeah. to retain that quality of talent, and he's probably going to have less competition to get on the field early than if he went somewhere else. Maybe that was what factored into the decision here, but he is going to be super, super fun to see his development, knowing the situation, all the stuff that we just talked about.